Hello, my name is Steve. Welcome back to American Steam Legacy. The 19th century ushered in many technological innovations. The first light bulb, the telegraph, and eventually the telephone, and the mass production of steel to name a few. It also saw the steam engine become the go-to power source for industry and transportation alike. As with all modes of propulsion, it's just a matter of time before someone wants to see how fast it'll go and possibly make history in the process. Which brings us to the topic of this video. New York Central Locomotive number 999 and its quest to carry a human being to a speed of 100 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the men and the machine behind the record-setting run and the controversy surrounding the actual speed attained. All this and more coming up next on American Steam Legacy. On May 10, 1893, New York Central Locomotive No. 999 attempted a record-setting run from Syracuse, New York to Buffalo, New York by way of Batavia. Newspapers ran stories of speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour being achieved with a maximum speed of 112.5 miles per hour. But in spite of the media coverage, lingering doubts of the actual speeds attained have persisted ever since. In this video, we're going to take a look at the historical account of number 999's run. Then we're going to see what physics, thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, heat transfer, and a whole bunch of math have to say about it. Number 999 was a 440 American type designed by the New York Central and constructed in the Rhodes West Albany shops in New York State in 1893 and was the sole member of the NC-14 class. The locomotive was built at the suggestion of the New York Central's general passenger agent, George Henry Daniels, in 1892. With the World's Columbian Exposition coming up the following year, Daniels believed showcasing a new, high-speed locomotive would be a great way to publicize New York Central's passenger train, the Empire State Express. The task of designing and building such a locomotive fell to William Buchanan, New York Central's chief superintendent of motive power and rolling stock. Buchanan had already designed high-speed locomotives for the New York Central and now had to do himself one better. Buchanan's most recent designs were the 55 American types comprising the IC and ICA classes of 1890. These were also tall driver locomotives with drive wheels 70 and 78 inches in diameter respectively. Using the I classes as a starting point, Buchanan added 86 inch drive wheels and a significantly larger firebox. The total evaporative surface area was increased by a little over 100 square feet to 1,930 square feet for number 999. The boiler itself remained unchanged with flues of the same number and diameter. Boiler pressure was also unchanged at 180 PSI and piston diameter and stroke were carried over from the I-Class as well. Buchanan's design also called for brakes to be installed on the pilot truck, which was a first. Other than the 86-inch drive wheels, nothing else about number 999 suggests a locomotive capable of 100 miles per hour. Fresh out of the West Albany shops, number 999 arrived in Syracuse, New York for its high-speed run west to Buffalo via Batavia, a distance of approximately 145 miles. This line was a good choice for an attempt at setting a speed record. The right-of-way featured long straight runs, gentle curves, and was relatively flat. There is, however, some ambiguity pertaining to the number of coaches number 999 had in tow. Some sources claim several, while others say a few. The only certainty is that number 999 was, in fact, hauling a train. With engineer Charles Hogan and fireman Ike Odell on board, number 999's run began at Syracuse Station on May 10, 1893. While on its westward dash, the highest speeds were recorded between Batavia and Buffalo. It was on this leg of the trip that number 999 supposedly reached 112.5 miles per hour. But there are a few things to note here. First of all, the locomotive was not equipped with a speedometer, so the engine crew didn't really know for certain how fast they were going. Secondly, the speeds reported were calculated by newspaper reporters using stopwatches, so these are hardly official figures. It's also interesting to note that both the press and the railroad had ample incentive to jade the truth. The newspaper people probably gave in to their need to run sensational headlines in order to sell more newspapers, and the railroad had no incentive to stop them since the New York Central wanted to stick it to their competition, specifically the Pennsylvania Railroad. However, be it sloppy timekeeping, ulterior motives, or just honest mistakes, we only know of number 999's historic run by its external facts. 
but the lingering doubts about the speeds attained still persist. The only avenue left to gain additional insight into this historic controversy is to do some reverse engineering. There are a lot of factors other than horsepower and boiler steaming capacity that determine the speed of a train of a given weight. Therefore, we have to make some underlying assumptions, and to be fair, I gave number 999 the benefit of the doubt where it made sense to do so. The biggest assumption are the grades on the line between Syracuse and Buffalo. Even the slightest positive grade can add considerably to the work a locomotive has to do to keep a train moving at a given speed. And since the grade profile of the line as it existed in 1893 isn't readily available, it's impossible to ascertain the effect grade changes had in this particular case. What we do know is the Syracuse to Buffalo line is relatively flat with gentle curves, so we're assuming that any grades that did exist had a negligible effect on number 999's performance. Since horsepower is one of the key metrics in this analysis, a method for calculating cylinder mean effective pressure is also needed. Mean effective pressure is the average pressure acting on a piston as it moves through its stroke. The most accurate way to determine mean effective pressure is through direct measurement, but since that's not possible, we have to calculate it. There are various methods for calculating mean effective pressure, and each gives a slightly different result. I chose a logarithmic equation, which takes into account cylinder back pressure. Since expelling the expanded steam from the cylinders and through the exhaust pipes does consume power that would otherwise be used to move a train. The third factor that requires an educated guess is the number of coaches number 999 was pulling on that particular day. The sources I found didn't commit to a specific number. If number 999 was pulling a full tonnage train, I'm sure someone would have taken note. Based on photographic evidence, a four-car consist was used in regular service, but since there is some ambiguity about the number of coaches pulled on this high-speed run, we're going to assume that at least two coaches were used at a minimum and three coaches at a maximum. Before we get into the results of the analysis, it's important to note that we're assuming a 15% pressure drop between the boiler and the cylinders. And since trains of this era used friction bearings on all axles, we're also using 8 pounds per ton of rolling resistance. The calculated steaming capacity for number 999 came in at 117,000 cubic feet of steam per hour at 180 psi. A good place to start would be to take a look at the maximum speed that could be attained in regular service while pulling a full consist of four coaches. A passenger coach of this time period typically weighed between 40 and 45 tons, so for the sake of this analysis we're using a weight of 42.5 tons for a 53 foot wooden coach. As expected, as speed increases the horsepower required to maintain that speed increases as well. As is the case with a steam locomotive, the more horsepower required, the greater the steam consumption, which means cutoff has to be increased as speed increases. So we have two limiting factors on top speed, the maximum horsepower the locomotive can produce and the maximum steaming capacity of the boiler. Fortunately for number 999, steaming capacity was cited as not being an issue, at least not in normal service. As shown in this table for a four-car consist, speeds up to 60 miles per hour were possible without excessively taxing the boiler, while horsepower per ton developed by the locomotive was adequate as well. At 65 miles per hour, we're getting very close to the boiler's maximum steam output since we're at 75% cutoff, and the required horsepower per ton is very close to what's available. To reach 70 miles per hour with a four-car train requires more horsepower than number 999 can produce. So in this case, the limiting factor is horsepower per ton, and the maximum speed is somewhere around 65 miles per hour. So reaching 100 miles per hour with four coaches in tow simply was not going to happen. Now that we know that reaching 100 miles per hour with a train of at least four cars was impossible, what if we run the analysis again only with a lighter train? If we eliminate one coach, reducing the total weight to 229.5 tons, we get a similar result. As expected, we've gained speed by reducing weight, and the maximum speed is now just over 70 miles per hour. At 75 miles per hour, we run into the same issue as before. The required horsepower per ton is in excess of what number 999 could manage, and we're reaching the limits of the boiler as well. So with a three-car train, a little over 70 miles per hour would be the maximum speed. So let's lighten the train even further. What if only two coaches were used? The additional weight reduction gets us to approximately 75 miles per hour, but we're still a long way from 100. And while the required horsepower per ton is no longer an issue, we're running up against the other limiting factor, boiler capacity. It's important to keep in mind that throughout this analysis, it's been assumed that the fireman can keep the fire hot enough to maintain boiler temperature and by extension, boiler pressure. While number 999 had a relatively large firebox compared to the boiler, and the locomotive had a reputation for being a free steamer, this is a reasonably safe assumption, but there are limits. 
If this assumption holds for steam demand equal to 89% of the boiler capacity, which it probably doesn't, then 75 miles per hour is approximately the maximum speed we can expect with a two-car concept. Since number 999 was pulling a multi-car concept, running this analysis for a single coach doesn't seem necessary. But just for fun, let's see what number 999 could do if running light. In other words, no train. Once again, boiler capacity is an issue. The maximum speed is about 102 miles per hour, but this is a bit of a stretch. The boiler is at 98% capacity. In the real world, the actual speed would be somewhere in the high 90s, perhaps touching 100 miles per hour at a cutoff between 55 and 60%. So this brings us back to the questions of did number 999 achieve 100 miles per hour and could number 999 achieve 100 miles per hour? The answer to the first question is a definite no. Given the boiler pressure and cylinder diameter, the horsepower required simply isn't there, especially with a three-car concept. As for the question of could number 999 reach 100 miles per hour, the answer is maybe. If everything goes right, there's no headwind, and the fireman can maintain boiler pressure, the top speed would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 miles per hour. But whatever the case may be, we cannot escape the fact that number 999 was a fast locomotive, at least by 1893 standards, and the locomotive was definitely deserving of being preserved as an important piece of railroad history. Whether it was the fastest requires examining other locomotives of the same type and built in the same time period and comparing the results. But that's a story for another day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And once again, my name's Steve, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.